um, periodontal disease, gum disease, where we used to have to graft and things like that. They actually now use lasers. And over the last four years now, the endodontists and periodontists who used to poo-poo the lasers now have patented the lineup procedure because it's theirs, right? It's, it's amazing because really it's a, a dental hygiene procedure. It's deep root and planing, uh, just where they're going to go in and scrape and clean the teeth and the roots of the teeth, and they go in and treat then with the laser, and they get phenomenal results. Um, but now, of course, it's theirs because they patented it. And now all the endodontists and periodontists are really the up and upper. But can the endodontists still use it? No. Yes, but they can't call it that. Okay. And in California now, if your dentist doesn't tell you that you could have this type of a procedure done, you're actually at risk of, the dentist is actually at risk of malpractice. So, because it's so much more advanced. Um, but I, I don't want to get into that. That's, that's for my dental friends. So, again, trauma then, as we look at it, there are many things that we can do to assist the body quickly. One of the key fundamentals then in looking at trauma is as quickly as possible restoring range of motion. Okay? A person who's had a traumatic experience who lies in a bed, every day their muscles are atrophying at a rate of 5%. Okay? It does not take long for that leg to just completely shrink post-trauma or the arm to shrink, or the facial, facial muscles, or the lungs, or the heart capacity. The body will only exercise to the ability of stress or demand placed on it. That's why they've gone from the completely immobilization techniques that they used to do after back surgeries to when that anesthesia is wearing off, this guy who's had back surgery is bending over and standing up and walking around. That's why the hip surgeries and knee surgeries now, the old procedure was, yeah, stay in bed for six weeks and then we'll get you out. You'll be in a passive movement machine immediately now. And then from there, weight bearing as quickly as possible. Within a matter of days, we're going right for range of motion. So again, with the trauma, we want to restore range of motion. Now we don't want to, with the ankle, if I can't bear weight and I'm suspicious there's a fracture, we don't want to encourage walking if it's so painful. But we do elevate it, put a compression on it, pump it out or milk it out, and then have them trace the alphabet, okay? Do uppercase and lowercase so we restore the range of motion as quickly as possible. Um, when I was at chiropractic school, I was playing uh, just a touch football game with a group of young men. And I just went to get away from one of the boys and I stuck my hand in the ground as I slipped on this slick grass and I broke my hand right there. It just popped that bone. And all I did, um, I, one of my friends, one of my classmates, her father is a chiropractor and we went to his place and I x-rayed it just to confirm where the position of the bone was. And uh, all we did is took a golf ball, held the golf ball right there so that my hand was in an appropriate position and then wrap that for two weeks. Every day I'd just work on that range of motion. After two weeks, the pain was gone. So I, I'm not encouraging you to do that. But that's, <laughs> that's what we did. Okay? But by range, maintaining the, the range of motion, I was able to maintain the strength, and I was able to go back to doing all the procedures that I had to do with my hands to be able to pass my glasses. And uh, I never had to have it casted. And then I had it re-x-rayed, and it's, it healed up great. Okay? But you want to have a certain degree of knowledge of that. I was in Colorado last week with a guy who uh, is a, a rancher and he's a hunting guy but he's just a really neat guy but he's originally from Nebraska farm farmer right and uh, he was doing something where he had broken he got kicked by a horse and the horse broke his arm he could tell it was broken it was just like that and he'd been to a doctor before he'd fixed his arm so he went and just grabbed a hold of a gate and just pulled his arm and it set right back and Went back to life. Good night. So, as we look at things, the body has the ability to heal. Don't do those farm techniques that I'm referring to. Okay? Seek the appropriate attention based on your family's need, your personal need. And then after that, let's encourage the body to heal optimally. Okay? The faster that we can encourage optimization of healing, be it a neurologic pattern with the eyes, to correct the scar or the trauma, 
be it some type of a supplement to help to reduce the inflammation or decrease the clotting effect or the bleed out effect, if you will, out of that vessel. Reduce the calcification or the post-traumatic response, the faster that body can potentially heal. Okay? Please, Jim. Like after surgery, I'm going to do like a cleanse or like I use distilled water to help pull out some of the anesthesia uh -huh. afterwards because it can be in there after a year. What other suggestions do you have right now? So the question is, after anesthesia, how can I get anesthesia out of my system more quickly? Alpha-lipoic acid, of course, we can use to help to detoxify the system. Remember, last week we talked about some of the glutathione pathways. Alpha-lipoic acid, though, and CoQ10 and resveratrol are three things that I recommend very highly. Um, Alpha-lipoic acid has the ability to be able to uh, bind and helps the liver to decongest. CoQ10, again, is one of those metabolic cofactors. Um, it helps to remove some of those toxins, and if we can really get that in the system quickly, then we have ability to heal and bind more quickly. That, that type of a, an insult, if you will. Is resveratrol? Resveratrol is an extract of green tea. The green tea extracts. Uh, let me write it. Okay. So the alpha lipoic acid, ALA, like that, and then the resveratrol and CoQ10, very, very, very helpful um, post-surgery. 